What's up guys, welcome back. My name is Mustafa and you're watching Renovation Scoop. In the previous video, you saw me doing the rough and plumbing for a bathroom and a kitchen in a basement. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to backfill and pour the concrete after your rough and plumbing is done in the concrete floor. So this is a quick after shot that I wanted to share at the beginning of this video. As you can see, it looks super nice and beautiful. All the seams are nice and smooth. Basically, there is no bump between the old and the new concrete that was poured. There's a secret recipe behind this, which I'm gonna share that in this video with you guys. So in the previous video, I explained how to do the rough and plumbing. After this rough and plumbing under the slab is done, I'm left with this much dirt, crushed stone and concrete. So the first thing that I like to do is to use all those broken pieces of concrete that I removed from the surface of the basement floor earlier and place them all around and underneath of these new pipes. We have to make sure that the slope of these pipes are not changed. So make sure to check this with a level after this part is done to make sure everything is nice and properly sloped away from the house. I decided to pour some crushed stone on top of my pipes and the broken pieces of the concrete. Because above this we have that weeping tile that is sitting, I wanted this to work like a filter and if there's any water coming from the ground, this can transfer it inside my new weeping tiles nice and easy. Because it's an older house, after I opened the concrete here, I removed a lot of dirt and clay from under the slab. In normal conditions in newer houses, after you open the concrete surface, you're gonna have a lot of crushed stone underneath anyway. In this application, there was none. For this specific area, I decided to add a lot of it because I have that weeping tile setting in that section and that's the reason why I used it here. I used this big old pipe to connect the weeping tiles together again and then I poured some more broken pieces of concrete in the cavity and then I used some more gravel on top of that. I repeated the same exact process for the rest of the job. Basically, I used those big broken pieces of concrete around and underneath of the pipes. So in a way this is going to prevent the pipes from sagging over time because these concretes are placed underneath of it it's going to kind of support the weight and keep it in place nice and sturdy. It's very important to double check your pipes with a level just to make sure that you didn't change the slope of the pipes as you move on. Now it's time to fill the rest of the area with the fine dirt and the gravel that was removed from the cavity previously. You can even use a shovel, just make sure that everything is compacted and all those voided and empty spots are all covered up. So I fill this up about two and a half inches below the surface of the concrete and then I walk on the whole entire place and try to compact it with my feet two or three times just to make sure everything is fully compacted and seated in place before I move on to the concrete mixing process. Now it's time to mix the concrete. As you can see, I have a bucket that is sitting there. About one third of that bucket is filled with cold water and then I add about half a bag of sand mix concrete to it. And then I mix it up using my mixing drill for about one to two minutes. And then I add the rest of the bag to the mixture and mix it up for another two minutes. So the secret is to use sand mix concrete. It is gonna give you that nice and a smooth finish. So you also have to make sure to make it a little bit soupy. So when it goes on, it lays down nice and flat without any issues. Another pro tip that I have to give you guys here, before I pour my concrete onto the surface, I get myself a garden hose and wet down this whole compacted area. It's very important not to miss this step because if you pour your concrete on top of dried up dirt and uh, gravel it's going to pull all that moisture away from your mixture and it's not going to cure as hard and as good as it's supposed to be now the rest of the process is fairly easy all you need to do is to pour that concrete on the surface and use some kind of a tool like a trowel to kind of move it around it just makes your life a lot easier to use a trowel you can use a piece of wood if you want to but you're not going to get that extra beautiful finish at the end so I highly recommend you to get a tool like this and go over the surface a few times don't be afraid you're not gonna mess this up you have another hour to work with this so you have a big window to work with this and make it super nice and beautiful especially that this concrete mix is a little bit soupier than normal so take your time and make sure everything is nice and perfect and level with the rest of the concrete slab this is another close-up look at my concrete. This is how it looks like. It's very nice and soupy as you can see it here. In a few seconds, I'm gonna be pouring it onto the cavity again so you can see the thickness one more time. 
So this is how it looks like after pretty much five minutes of mixing. As you can see, it comes off of the bucket very nice and easy. The mixture is pretty nice and good. It's all mixed up pretty nice and proper. As you can see, it's very easy to move it around. I guarantee even a five-year-old kid can do this. It's very satisfying actually to do this yourself. All you need to do is to fill up all those empty spots first. Then you go over all these surfaces with your trowel to make it nice and smooth. Once you get it nice and smooth, you just want to go over it a couple of more times to make it super nice and kind of get that glossy finish that you're looking for. So the rest of the process is going to be just a repeat. Basically, all you need to do is to mix more concrete and pour it in. So the only area that you need a little bit of custom work is around the shower drain. Because I'm going to be installing a shower base here, I'm going to need to have a little bit of a space around the shower drainage pipe. That's because when I'm installing my shower base, I want to be able to move this pipe a little bit in case I need to. So in order to have that space around the pipe, we need to place something to prevent that concrete from getting close to the pipe. So in order to do that, I went to the backyard, I found this flower pot, I cut the bottom portion of it, and then I placed it around the pipe. And then I poured my concrete around it. This way, when I'm installing my shower base, I have a little bit of room to work with. So the pouring process was just done. As you can see, the surface of the concrete looks a little bit bumpy. That's normal. It's because it was just poured. We need to allow this to sit for about 40 minutes. Then we're going to come back and make it nice and smooth. After about 40 minutes, the surface of the concrete gets a bit harder and it's easier to level it up. So I like to clean up the edges with a masonry brush. You can even use a broom. Then you can use a trowel or a magnesium float to go over all the surfaces one more time, give it a couple of passes and it's gonna give you that nice and glossy finish. So this is how it looks like after pretty much 12 hours. As you can see, the surface of the concrete is hardened. It looks pretty nice. For the most part, all the edges are very nice and smooth and level with the old concrete. So this is a close-up look of how the edges look like. As you can see, it looks pretty nice and smooth. This is the texture that you get on the surface of the concrete. As you can see, it turned out super nice and beautiful. If you have any lippage here, I'm going to show you how to take care of it. For example, this area is sitting a little bit proud of the old concrete. So all you need to do is to get yourself a utility knife. As you can see here, the surface of my concrete is not fully cured. It's better to do this after 24 hours. All you need to do is to go over all these edges with your utility knife a couple of times and it's going to turn out super nice and smooth and flush. So there you have it guys, this is the footage after a few days that the concrete was fully cured. As you can see, it turned out super nice and beautiful. Now, regardless of what type of flooring we're going to be installing, we don't have to use any kind of self-leveling compound because it's already nice and level and ready to go. I really hope this video was helpful. If it was, please don't forget to hit that like button. If you're new here, please make sure to subscribe. I have a bunch of cool videos coming and I already have a bunch of cool videos in my channel. Please make sure to subscribe so you can watch those videos as well. Thank you very much like always for watching my videos. Till next time, peace.